Hi guys, Dr. Houlihan here with Scottsdale Scoliosis and Spine Therapy. Today I want to talk to you guys about seven new studies that have come out this year in 2023 regarding scoliosis. I'm going to talk about what these studies are, what they found, and what that means for scoliosis research and treatment moving forward. To fully understand what we're talking about here, I want to introduce the concept of strength and level of evidence. Different types of research and different study designs can yield stronger or weaker evidence. And all the way up at the top, the strongest evidence that we can have comes from meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and random randomized control trials. Even better if you have a systematic review of randomized control trials. So keep that in mind as I talk about these seven different studies here. So this first study is a systematic review and meta-analysis of the Schroth method used in isolation for treating scoliosis. This study found that the Schroth method used in isolation yielded statistically significant reductions in cob angle and trunk rotation angle and improvements in quality of life. One of the best takeaways from this study is that all the studies that were included in here published their protocols so we know exactly how much exercise they were doing to achieve these results. All of the protocols that were analyzed accumulated between 180 minutes and 270 minutes of Schroth exercises per week, which adds up to about three to four hours a week. The study concluded that the Schroth method in isolation is effective for reducing cob angle, trunk rotation angle, and improving quality of life. One of the drawbacks the study pointed out was that the statistically significant reduction in the cob angle did not meet the clinically relevant threshold of five degrees. However, if you're talking to any clinician, whether it's a physical therapist, an orthotist, or even if you're talking about a spinal fusion. The goal is not to reduce the cob angle, it's simply to stabilize the curve and prevent it from progressing. This data demonstrated that the Schroth method does just that. This next study looked at the effects of a best practice program for treating scoliosis, which includes a Rigo Chanot type brace and Schroth exercises. Many studies have looked at the short term effects of these exercises, but have not determined how well they'll actually hold up in the long term. This study determined that by using a best practice protocol, including bracing and Schroth exercises, 88% of patients were able to reduce their cob angle. Even better, in the long-term follow-up, which ranged from two to five and a half years, 83% of those changes remain stable. Another bonus found in this study was that patients who were prescribed both bracing and exercises had higher compliance to both of them than patients who were prescribed either bracing or exercising in isolation. The main drawback of this study is that they were not clear about the timing of the exercises. They stipulated two visits in the clinic per week with a home exercise program, but they did not specify the duration of those visits. Okay, this next study is a good one. It was an observational study looking at whether or not sports participation affected the progression of scoliosis. They were looking at two different metrics. They looked to see if someone's curve progressed greater than five degrees, and they also looked to see if someone's cob angle at the end of treatment was larger than 25 degrees. This study found that kids participating in sports one to four times per week had a 46% reduced chance of their curve progressing by five degrees, and a 47% reduced chance of their curve ending up being larger than 25 degrees. That's a pretty significant reduction. The only drawback of this study is that they did not specify how long you had to be participating in sports per session. But these results are in line with other studies showing that sports overall have a protective effect against the progression of scoliosis. Okay, this next study was looking at the symmetry of the transverse abdominis muscle. If you're not familiar, I want to talk a little bit about Thomas Meyer's anatomy trains concept. He's proposing a new paradigm where rather than the skeleton being the scaffolding that supports all of our soft tissue, he proposes that the skeleton is suspended within a matrix of soft tissue. It is no secret that with scoliosis, there are muscle asymmetries that occur all over the trunk. And with this concept, concept in mind, it's easy to see how improving the symmetry of the trunk muscles can benefit your scoliosis. There were four different conditions they looked at. They looked at supine resting position with and without abdominal muscle contraction, and then the supine Schroth exercise with the corrective pads in place with and without abdominal muscle contraction. At the beginning of the study, they established that supine Schroth exercise with corrective pads in place produced the greatest symmetry of the transverse abdominus muscle. They then had an experimental group who continued to perform this exercise two hours per week for four weeks. Not only did these patients have greater symmetry of the transverse abdominal muscle after the experiment, but they also had clinically significant reductions in the cob angle and the trunk rotation angle. One of the drawbacks of the study is that the two groups were recruited separately. Once to establish which position resulted in the greatest transverse Transverse abdominis symmetry, and then another group to carry out the experiment. It was also a relatively low sample size. This next study builds on a precedent that has already been established, but for those of you who are not yet familiar, this study looks at the effects of Schroth exercise in addition to nighttime bracing. There were two groups in this 
experiment. One who just did nighttime bracing, and one who did nighttime bracing plus Schroth exercises for one year. They were looking to see how many patients progressed greater than five degrees, and how many patients had to be converted to full-time bracing at the end of the year. In the exercise group, only 14% of them had a curve that progressed greater than five degrees, versus 43% in the nighttime bracing alone group. And at the end of the year, only 5% of the exercise group had to be converted to full-time bracing, versus 24% of the nighttime bracing only group. This study concluded that the addition of Schroth exercises reduced curve progression at one year and at skeletal maturity. The major downfall is that this is level two evidence because there's so many variables that could not be controlled for. This next one builds on a precedent that has already been mostly established as well, but this is a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized control trials, which again is about as strong as research can get. This is referring mainly to chiropractic care and things like spinal manipulation. The study analyzed two different groups of patients, one who just had manual therapy as an intervention, and one who had manual therapy plus something else like bracing or exercise. This study determined that there were only statistically significant reductions in the Cobb angle in the manual therapy plus exercise or bracing group and not in the manual therapy alone group. This systematic review and meta-analysis concluded that there is no evidence to support spinal manipulation in the treatment of scoliosis. The drawback of a lot of studies that have looked into manual therapy is that they're very low quality, poorly designed, with inconsistent results. This last study looked at the impact of physical activity on the prevalence of scoliosis. Parents are gonna love this one. This was a study conducted in Croatia where they collected data on the presence or absence of scoliosis and a ton of different lifestyle factors. They looked at the difference in scoliosis prevalence between males and females males, both active and inactive. The prevalence of scoliosis in active males was 3%, versus 4.1% in inactive males. And the prevalence of scoliosis in active girls was 7.4% versus 10% in inactive girls, which was deemed to be statistically significant. And here's my favorite part of the whole study. They determined that there is a positive correlation between the prevalence of scoliosis and time spent using handheld electronic devices like cell phones. Now, it's not like using your cell phone is gonna give you scoliosis. This data is correlative and not causative. But parents, please go scare your kids with this data, tell them to put down their cell phone and go outside and climb a tree or something. So that is my summary of some of the research that has emerged this year regarding scoliosis. I hope you guys found this information helpful. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, you're welcome to contact me here at Scottsdale Scoliosis and Spine Therapy. I'd love to chat with you guys or meet you in person.